Hey, thank you for tuning in. And I hope these devotionals are encouraging you in your walk with Christ. Um, in chapter four, we're seeing that we are to walk a worthy walk. <laughs> what is the worthy walk? Well, it's just a walk that is a, in surrendered obedience to his indwelling presence. The worthy walk looks like and sounds like Jesus. It's what fits who God has made us to be. And then he calls us from that into one body. No more Jew, no more Gentile, you know, no more separation between individuals uh, based on nationality or um, even uh, male or female. We're, we all have the same Christ and we're called to be one body in him, uh, to be filled with his life and to release his life. This is way different than the, the general idea of what we think of in religion, where we go to get something. He's saying, listen, I've prepared you and put my life in you so that when you gather as the body, you're functioning as an individual part of that body for the benefit of all. So we no longer go to get, <laughs> we go to give because God has equipped us. So in Ephesians 4, starting in verse 7, he says, but grace was given to each of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. So Christ equips every individual He's the source of the church's power to function effectively in society. There, there is a diversity of gifts, but they are gifts are grace. Think about that. We don't deserve to be used of God or have God's life in us or to be gifted by God to bless the whole. It's a grace. So whatever the way God has gifted us is a grace from him. It's not something that exalts us, but it exalts him. So you might be thinking, well, what's my spiritual gift? Or do I have a spiritual gift? And I say, absolutely. Every born again child of God is gifted by God and his grace to function for the benefit of the body. And if you exercise your gift, you're going to contribute to the vitality and ministry of the church. And consequentially, if you withdraw and don't function, the body will suffer. Because the body wasn't meant to be one, it was meant to be a whole. Think of it like this, each cell functions in the purpose it was given. The cells don't divide. They don't separate from each other. They don't argue. They, they're called to, to do a purpose, as are we. In Romans 12, uh, verse 4 through 6, Paul told the Roman church at Rome, he says, For as in one body we have many members, and the members do not all have the same function, so we through many are one body in Christ and individually members of another, having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us. Let us use them if prophecy in proportion to faith. And he goes on and on. He talks about, you know, um, you know the role of the pastor teacher and, and, and all the different gifts. No one's gift is attributed to their own ability. Your gift is a, uh, 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 your gifting for the church is a, is a grace that is empowered by the indwelling life of God. In a healthy body, the cells don't get together and vote on which cell does what. <laughs> uh, in a healthy body, the cells do not revolt or go their own way. That would make an unhealthy body. Paul wants us to grasp 
is that the, the ecclesia, the local church, is to function as a body and recognize that each person has a unique role in keeping the entire body healthy. So why, why do we treat the church? Well, let me think about it this way. Why does the church often get thought of as a place we go to get? Um, since I've been back in the United States, I've, I've been like, people always say, well, I'm shopping. I'm church shopping. I'm like, why? Why are you church shopping? Because you're looking for the place that's going to provide you the entertainment or the programs, whatever you want to call it, that you enjoy. And it's all about you. And that will never produce a healthy thriving body. It's only when we say, Lord, here I am. Where do you want me? How do you function? How do you want me to function for the benefit of others? First Corinthians 12, four through six says, now there are varieties of gifts, but the same spirit. And there are varieties of service, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who empowers them all in everyone. Do you see it? Gifts, but one spirit. Service, one Lord. Activities, one God who empowers them all. You see, it's not about what I bring to the table. And without a diversity of gifts, the church is not healthy. He says, therefore, it says, when he ascended on high, he led a host of captives. When Christ ascended from the earth, having been triumphant over sin and death, he did so as a conquering king and the Lord of Lords. Actually, this is kind of a quote from us, I believe from Psalm 68, verse 18. He said, you ascended on high leading a host of captives in your train and receiving gifts among every man, uh, even among the rebellious, that the Lord God may dwell there. The psalm is a psalm of triumph. And we need to remember that our Lord is triumphant. He descended from on high. He took on his human flesh. He humbled himself. And he went to the cross to become what we were, sinners. So not only did he die for us, he died as us. So that when he went to the grave, we too went to the grave and all our sin was left behind. He bore it on the cross. And then he rose again, triumphing over all of his enemies. Satan had his been defeated, even if he doesn't know it. <laughs> he disarmed the rulers and authorities. He put them to open shame, Colossians tells us. Now, friends, and he goes, and he gave gifts to men. Every person has been gifted in a special way. We have become more than conquerors. Sin no longer holds us in bondage. And he has given us gifts, which is in the Greek charisma. He gave his charisma to his people. Now, there is sometimes what we call a charismatic movement. But listen, folks, every church should be filled with, with members with different charisma, <laughs> the empowerment of the spirit in the life of the individual. That shouldn't be something scary. It should be something beautiful that we rejoice in because we all draw the same power, energy, vitality from the same source, God himself. He's given us his spirit. One spirit, one Lord, one God who gives power to each of us 
to function in his body, his ecclesia, his local church, and manifest his goodness in this world. He gave gifts to men, and you have one. In saying he ascended, what does it mean but that he also descended into the lower regions of the earth? First, he left the majesty of heaven. He came down to earth. And after he went to the cross, he went to the grave. And all of this speaks to his incredible incarnation. His liberation of all who look to him. He who descended is the one who also ascended far above all of the heavens. This is painting the picture of Christ in his ascension where he receives exaltation and supremacy where he sits at the right hand of the Father in authority, waiting for the final conquering. If you realize that you have been empowered and equipped for the benefit of the body, you don't have to take a test, (laughs) although that might be helpful for you to identify. All you need to do is say, Lord, here I am. And you have given me this gift by grace. How would you like to live through me? How do you want to manifest your life through me? In what ways? Lord, here I am. Surrendered. Without reservation to you, my Lord. And I know that you are the source of life and power and that your spirit is in me. And so as I step aside from doing my will, be pleased in all that you desire to do through me. And friend, you will benefit. The whole body will benefit. Stay home and stay alone, and you suffer and the church suffers. Don't miss out on that gift that God has given you. Hey, I love you, and I hope you have a great day.